Hey, uh, my name's Callum, um, and I'm going to talk about accessibility. Uh, as Jacob just said, I work at a company called Samnose. We do internet performance monitoring, which is a lot more interesting than it sounds. Uh, and I'm the author of Vue.js uh, and Running. Um, so accessibility, I'm going to start with some facts. Um, they're basically about uh, the number of disabled people, in the, people with disabilities in the UK. But I haven't memorized them, so I'm going to have to read them off a bit of paper. So in the UK, there's 2 million people who are visually impaired. Uh, 360,000 of them uh, are registered as blind or partially sighted. Uh, there's 10% of the population are dyslexic, 4% of them severely so. So both of those two categories um, will use screen readers. Blind people will use screen readers to, uh, to do everything with a computer. Dyslexic people, it's, it's a bit different because they can see what's on the screen, but then when they read the text, Sometimes they have difficulty, uh, so they have to use a screen reader to read out longer bits of text. Um, there's 11 million people with hearing loss, uh, including myself, because I played drums as a kid and didn't use earplugs. Big mistake. Um, 900,000 of them are severely or, or profoundly deaf, so those people need subtitles and videos, um, or in talks. Uh, Color blindness affects 2.7 million people in the UK which is 4.5% of the population, which is a huge, a huge number. Then there's motor impairments, which is a massive category of disabilities. Uh, it, it can be from people who are unable to use a keyboard, full, uh, all the way through to people who um, have very little motion. They'll use, uh, they'll, they'll use an eye gaze mechanism to use their computer, or they'll blow into a tube. Uh, and then there's epilepsy. Um, which I, I feel that's a really important one to consider, because if we make a website which isn't accessible to blind people, then they just can't use our website. It's not, well, it's, it's not good, but it's not the end of the world. Whereas if we, make a, if we make a website which can accidentally trigger a seizure, that's, that's not ideal. Cool, so um, I'm, gonna t I'm talking about specifically accessibility in single-page apps, not just accessibility overall, because this is a view conference, uh, and I've only got half an hour. So I'm going to focus on screen readers, because that's the one that's really affected in single-page apps. Um, so you, there's a lot of people in the accessibility community who say, if you want an accessible website, you shouldn't build a single-page app. Um, but I don't believe that. I think we can make single-page apps. I think that are accessible. Um, it, we just have to take a few extra steps. So, how many people in the room know what a screen reader is? Most of you, good. How many people ha have seen someone use a screen reader? A few. Cool, so um, back in London, I met up with a guy called Vanya. Uh, he works as an accessibility tester. He uses a screen reader every day, uh, and he's blind. So I met up with him, we recorded some videos, um, which I'd like to show you. The audio in them is kind of bad, because I rented a microphone, but I didn't have to use it. Um, so sorry about that. Where did that go? So cool, so, sorry. so this first one is, um, I asked him to explain how he uses the web. So in order for us blind people to use computers or phones or pretty much any technology. Uh, we use a piece of software called Screen Reader, which pretty much does what it says. It converts anything that's on the screen into either speech or braille output. So in theory, anything that is on the screen, it will be spoken when using cursors or other keyboard commands. So obviously, if you're blind, uh, mouse use is impossible. So we completely rely on keyboards. Um, the screen readers, of course, have, uh, they've been around since, well, even 80s. And of course, as the technology improved, the screen readers improved, the, the very early uh, screen readers were not that good. Uh, they could literally just see what's on the screen. The advantage of screen readers today is that they can of 
often hook into APIs and all sorts of ways. So it's not literally just what's on the screen. They can actually interact directly with apps, with browsers, with software. And so, you know, it's become somewhat more complex, but at the same time, the power is much bigger and they're a lot more powerful and a lot can be done. Uh, now, of course, in order for any sort of thing to be accessed by a screen reader, things need to be coded properly. So you could have a link or a button, but if that link or a button has no text, the screen reader is not going to know what it is and it will be completely useless for us. So those are the basics of, uh, of how it works. Um, so that's that, that's just explaining what a screen reader is. Um, basically, in in the context of a website, it starts at the top left, and it reads out everything on the page. Um, then I asked him to show me him using a screen reader on a good website and on a bad website. Um, his screen reader is set really quickly, so don't worry about it if you don't understand it, because I'll do a I'll I'll demonstrate afterwards. Um, but this is him showing the BBC homepage. Uh, yeah, so this is him showing the BBC homepage, which is a website he regularly uses, which he says is really good from an accessibility point of view. Yeah, damn. New notes, if it. Eight regions, 112 headings, and one on BBC dash. Virtual PC, BBC home, visit blank, accessibility links. So obviously they have like accessibility links at the top. List of two items, same page link, skip to content. So things like skip to content. Link accessibility help. And they even have accessibility help, which I actually never tried. Uh, well, let's just start the hell let's do it. BBC My Web My Way Home Google Chrome Accessibility Links 6 regions 17 headings and 60 BBC My Web My Way Home Link My Web My Way Local Navigation Link out to guides Choose a topic you would like help with Okay, so it does open fine BBC Home Google Chrome Main region end It's at the top of the page of an archive today Okay, but still This is end Link on your user Link notifications So Link on your user Then right at the top after that, it has my name because I'm signed in to BBC. And Link notifications. Notifications, so it should. BBC Home, BBC Banner Region, Horizon episode now available 2017. 10 things you need to know about the future I play 13 hours ago. List of one item, link settings. List end, list of one item, link Horizon episode now available. That's really cool because it right goes straight to all my suggestions. Blank, link I player. Notifications. Blank, link. 13 hours ago. So it tells me how long ago notification was sent. List end, blank. BBC homepage. Uh, and then, of course, this is you know, a regular home Dismiss page. notification button. Uh, if I do that, I should dismiss the notification. Dismiss notification button. BB dismiss notification button. Main region. Right, it didn't, but no mind. <laughs> the, um, I guess that's... That button isn't actually visible. It that's was interesting. Out. Dismiss notification button. So There's nothing there. It's supposed to be for the screen reader, yeah. but it Main region. doesn't seem to do anything. Now, one thing I really like is obviously they have regions, so Welcome to the BBC. this is the main region. But if I'm at the top, BBC. and I want to, um, you know, skip all the stuff from the top without too much effort, I can just press letter Q because it, that takes it to the main region of my screen. Is a main region. Yeah. Welcome to the BBC. Welcome to right to the content. So Thursday, link customize Thursday, in November. Obviously. Link customize your homepage. Blank. Link suspect names up to 12 people. And obviously this is the news, but generally, uh, you know, I think they are a very good example of just anything really. So that, that was an example of a good website, but you notice even on a good website, like the close button, which didn't close the notification, and the, uh, the accessibility page, which had been completely archived, but didn't tell him that it had been completely archived, even on, a, even on an example of a good website, it's still actually quite tricky to use the web. Uh, then I've got another example. Um, he really wanted to meet, there's two websites he really wanted to show me that he says he uses quite often that are quite bad. One was his bank. So we took a video of that and I was like, mm, not sure I can show that at a conference. <laughs> um, but the other one was YouTube, um, which I, I thought, massive company, Google, of course it'll be fine. But he's, he wanted to show me something specific, which he said they'd released a change. Uh, and he didn't know what the change was, but it didn't work for him. So I'll show you a video of that as well. Now, let's say I want to just share this video to my Twitter. So I will click on share here. 
dialogue. And all right, screen reader told me that there is a dialogue. But blank message on YouTube. Okay, so I go through the sending this message on YouTube, which is not what I want. Blank two. Search for people. Dot dot dot. Search for people. Search for people. Dot dot dot. Edit. There's an edit box. I don't really care about that. You may know. List box. Unlabeled zero button. Now, first of all, list box. This list box here next to search for people. I have no idea what it does. If I press enter on it, going up and down, nothing happens. Virtual PC. And then, down below that, unlabeled zero button. Unlabeled zero button. So they didn't even bother labeling the text at the button, which is just the biggest mistake that anybody could make. So I have no idea what this button does. Blank. Then below that, share a link. Yeah, share a link. That's what I want. Blank. List box. Again, list box that's completely. Right here. Does this give me options? Twitter, Facebook, what? It? it does absolutely nothing. Virtual PC. And then unlabeled zero button. Another unlabeled zero button, which again means nothing to me. And then Read only edit HTTPS slash slash at the bottom there is a URL that I guess one can copy, but it says it's a read only edit box. But I can't even copy. Copy button. Well, I am. There's a copy button. They labeled that for some reason. Copy button. And that's that. So it's terrible. It's uh, it's brilliant. And I wrote to Google about it. I never got any response. And for a big company as Google, where, you know, they run an entire operating system and they claim their so, you know, accessibility is so important. And, you know, they have done some really good things about Android, but then they break something as basic as this. Yeah, so, so that's like a huge website, YouTube, should, should work. Um, and it, it might be fixed by now, to be fair. The, I took these videos a few months back, uh, but at the time, he was struggling with that. So you could see there were entire sections of the page which the screen reader just couldn't access, buttons which weren't labeled. Um, stuff that was in a weird order for screen readers, like the link he couldn't hop, copy, but then the copy button after. Um, it, it, was, it was really interesting to me. Because he showed me a few websites, and he had problems with, I think he had problems with more websites than he found fine to use, which was interesting, because these weren't even single page apps. Um, but yeah, so that I'm, I'm done with the videos now. Uh, I kind of, I can just about understand that screen reader, because I've worked with accessibility quite a bit. I'm used to hearing them now. But I rec when I showed people these videos, they're like, what? What's it saying? Um, so I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of the screen reader, screen reader on my laptop. So he was using a piece of software called JAWS on Windows. Um, it's the most popular screen reader, but it's Windows only, and it costs a lot, so I don't have it. Um, so I use VoiceOver, which is built into OS X. I, don't, I only use this as part of my job. I don't use it all the time, so I'm not the best at using it. Um, and I've set the voice really slow. VoiceOver on Safari. Accessibility demo, window, accessibility demo, web content has key. So basically, so it, first it tells you where you are. Oh yeah, so I'm just going to apologize in advance. Uh, the screen reader's going to talk, I'm going to talk, we're going to interrupt each other, we're going to have, we're going to have a little fight probably. Uh, I'll try to avoid doing that, but we might end up accidentally talking at the same time. Yeah, so first it tells you where you are, um, then you can click around the page. In accessibility demo, web content, banner. Heading level two, accessibility demo. You are current navigation, visited link, index. So you can click around, it tells you uh, what, what kind of element you are, what type, uh, what it says. Then, so you can click around just one element at a time. You can press a button to get it to just read everything out in order. Uh, but what I find most useful and what I believe most people who use screen readers do is they navigate between certain types of elements. So for example, I can press a keyboard shortcut. Heading level one, heading level two, uh, heading level one, heading level two, accessibility and it, demo. And it just goes between the different headings. There's also a, a different shortcut for links. Index, hidden element, search, visited, link. You are current. Uh, and there's also a way um, of just showing all the links on the page. Ship visited web content, which is not that you are link. currently on web content. Do it. No items in no, 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 no items in oh. landmarks menu. 
as I said, I'm not the best at this. What's going on? I think it stayed in DevTools. I'll turn it off and on again. F5, no items in landmarks menu. F5, oh, no, no items in closing landmarks menu. Webcom F5, voiceover off. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Voiceover on Safari. Accessibility demo. Window. Ac landmarks. Cool, so that's what I was looking Windows for. Windows spot links menu. Um, you so are currently in a voice. So it'll give you a list of all the links on the page, and you can go through them, and it will read them out. Visit visited link. Visited link. Search. Headings menu. No items in web landmarks menu. And it does stuff like landmarks as well. So if you've got a banner or um, or a sidebar or a main, it will tell you about all of them, uh, which is great for skipping to the content. Some websites have a skip the content link. Um, uh, but if they don't have that, they can just skip to the main element, which also works. Um, so, so an implication of this is you, it gave you the list of the links, but it didn't show you where they were on the page. Um, so for example, I, I can't, I've got no specific examples, but for example, you can have a link that says, to go to this page, click here, and then here is the link. Uh, but if someone's just reading out the links, they won't know where it's going because they need the context. So it's better when you make a link to say the full. So to go to the documentation, click here, you'd have the entire thing as the link, not just the word here. Because then when they're just skipping through the links, uh, it's, it says the right thing. Cool, so now I've got a few, I, w I went through a load of view apps and a few libraries, and I found a load of common things that I, uh, f a load of common problems that happen to a lot of them. Um, so I'd just like to demonstrate them. No items in web's closing, web spot menu, accessibility demo space, selected. So the first one I found is um, when you have collapsible content, there's a couple ways you can hide it. You can use max height, you can use opacity. Um, but stu it, stuff that's not visible to us when we look at the screen might be visible to the screen reader. So here we've got a, uh, a little collapsible thing. So if I click on this. Visited link. Press visited link. Collapsible. This is some text that can be hidden. So that. Looks like it behaves as expected, but then visited press visited link. Even though it's closed, this is some text that can be hidden. Visited link. This is some more text that can be hidden. Laura Knightson. Even though the text isn't visible because it's hidden using max height, it's still being read out. I actually found a good example of this on a real website. Introduction. Vue.js conference. Amsterdam. <laughs> web content. You are currently on web content. Vue.js conference. And visited link. HTTP. So here we've got, well, I'll, ju I'll just show you. Visited link. Front end love conference. Link. View J's road trip. Navigation. Visited link. Ab so eventually we got to the links we were expecting. Um, but to the top left, there's some links that aren't visible. Um, I'm going to get rid of this because it's really distracting. What needs visited link. There's some, there's some links that aren't visible, um, which are being read out by the screen reader. And I'm assuming that was intentional, because you'd probably want to be able to find the links. Um, so it's good that they're being read out. But it's just something to be aware of, because sometimes it's not what you want. I, used to, I worked on a website where there was a um, completely separate markup for mobile. It was, it was a nav bar again, completely separate markup for mobile and for desktop. Um, and when you went through with the screen reader, it was reading out both the mobile and the desktop one, because it was hidden using max height. Um, so you, if you went through the site with a screen reader, you'd get the entire thing twice, which obviously wasn't optimal. Um, so there's that. The, the second example is something I originally found, I think it was on the Laravel documentation website or something like that. Um, but they fixed it Such now. A name. Ed so you, you'll probably have seen this. When you search in something and it pops up a load of suggestions below. Um, so for example, this is like searching a name. A. Duh. So if you're using a mouse, you can just click on one of them. But if you're using a screen reader or if you're just using a keyboard, so I'm going to click to go to the next element, which in theory, you'd hope, would select one of the names. Accessibility demo, web content. But instead, because we've lost focus on the input element, it's hidden the menu instead. So it's taken us back to the start of the page. Uh, and I've, I've seen that in a few places. It's these, the, the fix for this one um, is basically to do your search. Well, 
So a person who uses a screen reader, when they search, they will type what they want and then press enter, or they'll search. They won't just tab around looking for stuff. Um, so basically, the fix for that is when you have a search box, just always make sure that you can press enter, and it will like take you to a search page, or um, make sure the pop-up stays open so they can tab into it, or something like that. Web content. You want the next one I want to show you, and I've seen a load of examples of this, is um, custom components. So, the, so I've I've found a few. I'm not. I don't. I I'm, I don't want to pick on any library authors. Um, they've all done a great job. These are all great components. Um, they're just not accessible. Um, so I, I'll show you the actual uh, the HTML input element, and then what happens with these components. Range so zero. Slider. You are currently on a slider inside web content. To start interacting with the slider, press Control, Option, Shift, Down Arrow. So you can see it tells you that you can go into the slider and start uh, changing it. So I'll just do that. In slider. 1, 6, 10, 12, 20. You are currently on a slider in out of slider. Um, so you can just change the value with the keyboard pressing the right or left keys. It's, uh, it's simple. But then view slider component, um, this is what happens when you try to access it using a screen reader. View slider component, heading level two, toggle buttons. View slider component, heading level two, toggle. It's completely impossible to access using a screen reader. So not only can they not change the value, they don't even know it's there. Uh, there's the same thing happens with. Native check box. Is the thing true? Is the thing true? Unticked tick box. Tick is the thing true. Tick box. And tick is the thing true. Tick. So that was pretty simple. But then if we try it with is this. Is the thing view JS toggle button? No. You are currently on a text element inside web content. So it just said it's a text element, and it hasn't said that you, that you can change the value or anything. Uh, it's the same with all the other things. It's, um, you, with Vue.js date picker, it, it's an input, but you can't type into it, and you can't access it. It brings Clickable this up, text. but you can't actually get into it with a screen reader. Uh, it's the same as the search example. The moment you try to get into it, it closes itself. Um, and then it's the same with these select libraries. Um, so, so the way to fix these is if you are going to make a custom component, um, just work from an HTML uh, input element. Um, you can even have it in the DOM, but then hidden from the screen, and then your own custom stuff, but hidden from the screen reader. Because then when the screen reader user is going through the DOM, they just see the native HTML element. It's trickier for some things, like view multi-select. Pick the value pop-up button. View multi-select. I know Damien was working to make that accessible, but it's quite tricky, because even like the native HTML multi-select uh, element is not accessible. At least I couldn't work out how to use it. So that's, that's a trickier one. But most of these things would be quite yeah, not necessarily easy, but they're possible to make accessible. Um, the next section, dynamic content. Accessibility. So content that appears on hover, when you've got a mouse, that works fine. Um, but if you've got a screen reader. That link. Hover over me. Frame. Link. Hover. This is some heading. This is some oh. example dynamic content. You are. I'd never managed to get to that before. But I did have to press backwards, which is not normally the direction you go in. Um, so that's a completely thrown me. That's never been read out before. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so what I expected to happen was, well, what, so what did happen is. Heading level, heading level two, content that link, hover over me. You so, you, so you had the link when you hovered over it, and then you expect the screen reader to go to the content. Frame. But instead it skips over it completely, um, because it doesn't know that it's appeared. Um, so there's, there's. ARIA live attributes, uh, if you look up the ARIA spec, there's a way of reading out content when it appears to screen readers. I found a real life, well, real life-ish example of this. Um, so in to do MVC, this is the React one. I've been picking on Vue too much. What so, needs F, F, O, F, B, R, B, R. So here, what needs to be done? Stop it. Here you can see when you delete something, you hover over it and you press the delete button. But when you use a screen reader, 
Heavy right pointing angle quotation mark ornament. Heavy right pointing angle quotation mark ornament. Heavy right point. Boo. Unticked. Tick box. Foo. You bar. Unticked. Bar. You are. So there's some, there's some other weird stuff going on there as well. But basically, it's completely impossible to delete an item when you're using a screen reader. Um, this, uh, this one can be fixed by just not showing stuff on hover. Because also, even keyboard-only users, which are more common than screen reader users, uh, it's me most of the time, I try to not use a mouse. Because I've got an amazing browser extension that just turns all the links into letters. And it's so much quicker. But with something like this, I have to move the mouse. And it's annoying. Um, the, the next one is pop-ups and, pop and notifications. So, for example, Continue button. You are current accessibility demo web content. You are currently on a. F so, like custom dialogues, um, not the built-in ones, and notifications, or really any content that appears. So you could have a, you could have a chat, a chat app. Sorry. You could have a chat app where messages appear, um, but you've got to notify the screen reader that stuff's appeared, or it won't know. Because. Continue button. You are currently on a button inside web content. So it's told you that there's a continue button now. It's moved the focus to the continue button, but it hasn't told you the text. Close. Are you sure you wish to continue? It sh should have started with that, probably. Close. But press cl access a bit navigation. And you are currently in heading 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 le heading 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 level five. Whoops. Scarlet JS plan. And Select then show, do show no Then if I click the button to show a notification. Press show notification button. Press show notification button. Uh, it's. It's, it's opened the notification, but it hasn't told you what the notification said. So again, you can use ARIA Live um, to, to, show the, to, to say what the notifications are. The next one is quite an important one. Um, I haven't really shown it, but I'll Accessibility. You know. Navigation. Visited. Link. Index. Press. Visited. Link. Index. Visited. Press. Visited. Link. Hidden elements. You are so you might not have noticed, uh, even though I de just demonstrated it three or four times, when you navigate to a new page in a screen reader, if it's, a if it's a traditional web app, it says, OK, you're on a new page. This is what's on the new page. Um, but because we're using a single page app, we're handling the root and client side, it hasn't told the user that they've changed the page. It's just said that you've clicked on a link. Press visited link, hidden elements. But they don't actually know what's changed. Um, so there's, I think there's a bit of a debate here about what you should do. But one thing that's certain is, so in view router, um, in all the websites I work on, we've added to the, after, the hook for after navigation. We just announced to the it's possible to just announce stuff to screen reader users. There's a few libraries that handle it. Just saying, OK, you're now on this page. Um, some people also change the focus of the screen reader um, to be the heading element of the page, uh, which, which seems to work. I think the, um, I've forgotten the name of it, the React router. Not React Router, the other one that does that. It's got that built in. Uh, and I think they're working on it and View Router talking about what they should do. Visited, vis vis visited link. The other one, this is another thing that happens on Hover. Um, so this drop down menu appears if I hover over it, but doesn't appear. Visited, visited link. Drop downs down, end of navigation, visited. It's impossible to get into this um, using a screen reader. And I think this. I think this happens on the View website. There's a drop down in the top right, which you can't get to using a screen reader. It's super common. Um, the fix to that one is just make it so if you click on it, it opens. Because then, if I click on it, press visited link, drop down, nothing happens. But I can just make it so that if I click on it, it opens. So that's a pretty easy one to solve. So those are the common problems I found. Um, but what can so what can we do about this? So there's there are automated tools. This one is called A11Y. It's by Adios Money, I think, um, where you give it your page, it downloads the HTML, and it tells you common problems, like this image needs alt text. Um, but I ran it on this, so this exact website that I just demonstrated, which has horrible accessibility, uh, and it found one problem. So maybe it's, it, it's a good first step, but it doesn't get a lot of things, especially single page app specific. I actually saw this image, and it reminded me of this. Um, so this is someone who's thought, hmm, we need, we need Braille for our text. So they've, 
they've said, okay, door is locked, door's unlocked when let. So the braille reader can read it, it's great. We've completed the checklist, all done. <laughs> but they can't tell that it's lit. It's just remind, automated tools like that remind me of this. Um, just like, yes, we've satisfied all the checkboxes, but we've done nothing. <laughs> so there's automated tools like that, which, um, which do do a good job. But uh, the best thing to do is you can hire accessibility testers, people like Vanya. Um, he, his, his website is here. I would he, I'd recommend speaking to him, getting him to test your website, tell you what's wrong. Um, uh, or you can just learn how to use a screen reader. That's what I did. It took a few days. It was really confusing at first. Um, but it was well worth it. Um, yep, so that's what I'd recommend. Either hire someone or learn to do it. Uh, I, I will tweet a link out to an article about I wrote aimed at developers about how you can use voiceover on your Mac to test websites. Uh, yep, that's, that's it. Thank you. Thanks so much.